everybody. Um, today I thought we would go over um, carpal hyperextension and what to look for and how to assess for that. Now, usually with carpal hyperextension, um, you see a bit of, it looks a bit deformed actually when you see the dog standing because uh, the foot's kind of dropped and almost like the pastern is down on the ground. Um, and what that can happen acutely or it can happen over time with certain ligaments uh, sort of stretching and it, that creates that look. Um, but when we go in there and investigate a little bit more with our hands, what sort of things are we looking for? So we want to try to have a good feel um, of the accessory bone, um, of the carpal bones in there, and also get in, in there and have a, a good feel. Um, the normal range for uh, the carpus with extension is about 10 to 20, 20 degrees past neutral, so into extension. Any more than that, you might be thinking that the palmar fibrocartilage or those little intercarpal ligaments may be damaged and that's what's causing that excess movement in through there. So let's show you how I um, assess that with Boston as I'm So Boston's quite forthcoming with giving me his uh, wrist. And so when we're assessing, we want to try pushing um, the carpus into flexion. Quite often you should be able to get um, those pads to touch the caudal uh, part of the um, antibrachium there, which they do. And then moving into extension, I know. Um, you actually want to mimic um, the dog uh, with its foot on the ground. So when you come to test the extension, have your hand underneath and we're going to come up this way. Now, if you want to get a bit more of an accurate uh, range to see what's going on there, then you can get your trusty goniometer back out and you can uh, measure it that way. Um, other things you want to uh, have a bit of a feel of as well um, is the distal radius and ulna joint in through there. If you've got a young dog or um, a dog with growth plates still in there, you might find some pain through there, which might lead you on a different diagnosis. And you also want to have a bit of a feel of the accessory bone at the back as well. Um, sometimes you can get little fractures sitting in there as well. Um, other movements of the carpal joint, it's a primarily a hinge joint, but you should still get a little bit of um, lateral medial movement in there with your varus and valgus testing more so than um, other hinge joints in the body. Um, but that is how I test um, and assess if I think a dog might have some carpal hyperextension. Thank you, buddy. Mm -hmm.